As the ministry of the Conference Center grew, another ministry was beginning. One of the initial goals for Tuscarora was the establishment of a local church, and in 1980, Mount Bethel Lutheran Brethren Church formally began meeting on the grounds and called Rick Bridston to be the first pastor. It was great when the church came, everyone was so enthused. I just remember the milestone moments, you know, when we turned the game room into the chapel and, you know, the ping pong tables left, and they transformed that into a little chapel. Rick Bridson was the first pastor that we had and he was called and I can remember going to the airport to pick him up and he was in sneakers and that was before it was common, <laughs> before it was the way you dress today. And when he came into our house he, he circled <laughs> into the kitchen and he had a discussion with Helen and then he he circled and went into the living room. Well, he went from kitchen to kitchen, dining room, to, dining to, room, living room, to, living room. to the right. hallway, to the kitchen, to the whole time <laughs> we talked. He, he went in <clears throat> circles and, and he was so full of energy and he just, yeah. you know, and, and he could not understand in this wilderness place how he was going to get a church, a <clears throat> church built and it grew pretty fast. Cliff Heyman became the third president of the board in 1982 and worked alongside Herb Jacobson in both the establishment and execution of the initial long-range plan. Cliff was a wonderful man, and he really was my role model. He, he, was, he was a guy who, who did what he had to do, and uh, he, was, he was tough, and yet he was very gentle and uh, he was a good, good man. In 1987, Tuscarora gave the newly formed church five acres of land to build their own facility, which has itself seen several additions and expansions to accommodate a growing congregation. That same year, the Tuscarora Resource Center was founded to be a ministry specifically for full-time Christian workers. All throughout its history, Tuscarora has been blessed by faithful volunteers who made ministry possible, God has always provided men, women, and children to come alongside the staff. The biggest thing was the number of people that had begun coming. You know, originally it was only weekends that um, Tuscarora operated as a conference center. And then winters had been added and full weeks had been added, a summer program had been added. And I just, I just think we were all in awe of how the ministry had grown in such a short time. After I was an attendee, I then became a volunteer for 25 years helping run the uh, tournaments at Winter Weekend. Then uh, about 10 years into doing that, uh, Joe Batillo, who was the director of Teen Week at the time, asked me to come, to come up and do Teen Week. And in my mind, I'm like, no, I can't do what appears to be like Winter Weekend for a whole week because it was so hectic during that weekend. But uh, he persisted, and after a couple of years, I, I then agreed to come in 1990. And then I've served for 32 years straight until 2021. I have to tell you that I've become intimately uh, involved with virtually every toilet in this facility, um, let alone every shower stall um, and every piece of plumbing apparatus that exists in the hotel rooms because lo and behold, with the staff that was here, they were so focused on taking care of the big stuff. It was the stuff like clearing out the drains, et cetera, et cetera. You have to, believe, you have to understand, you, you chuckle when you hear this. Someone's gotta do it. Tuscarora had begun to distinguish itself among other camps and conference centers. When more guest rooms were needed, the Riverside Manor was designed to provide hotel-style accommodations, a step above the existing rooms, and a second wing was completed in 1998. Yeah, I think Tuscarora is kind of special in that it's positioned as a more of a higher-end Bible camp, um, where the food is generally much better than most camps, the accommodations are nicer, and uh, 
you know, it has it just has tremendous facilities. Nearly 30 years after the construction of the Ulla B. Olson Auditorium, the board of directors under the leadership of its fourth president, Ed Jensen, recognized the need for an even larger meeting space. And, uh, you know, part of the mission, of course, um, is for us to, you know, serve the Christian community with facilities and programming for worship and for teaching and, and that. Um, and uh, this idea about putting together a facility like the one we're in here uh, for, you know, for concerts and teaching and uh, all the kinds of things that serve the purpose of our mission, just, you know, it seemed like the thing to, to do. It just seemed like a really big thing to do. A fundraising campaign began for the construction of an auditorium which could seat 700 people. The goal of $1 million was surpassed and the decision was made to dedicate this building to two very special men, Reverend Ted Thompson and Radar Senum. And so it required, you know, the effort of so many people to be involved with it. Um, but um, to see it here all like it is today, you know, so many years later and you see the purpose it serves and, uh, you know, then you see how God's hand was in it, you know, and just like when the founders came and saw this piece of property for $475,000 at the time, that seemed like all the money in the world to them. Um, and yet God, remember Ted Thompson told me with a bit of a laugh, like, don't worry, God has all the money. <laughs> You're going to be okay. So, um, yeah, we said upon doing this task, just somewhat in the same spirit that the founders did when they first purchased the property. They said, you know, we're going to take a step of faith. We're going to pray about this and we're going to, you know, let God lead us through it. And um, yeah, and so here we are today in this beautiful building and uh, you see God's hand in it. With the addition of Riverside Manor and the Senum Thompson Center, Tuscarora solidified its reputation as a comfortable and modern location providing the highest quality in Christian hospitality. It's, it's hard to say, to point out one thing that's better than the other things, but I mean, it goes, it goes from the, the, the idea that, the, that the, the meals are good and the beds are comfortable. And the ministry of, of the people, the speakers who come is a blessing to everybody who comes. So you're winning all the way around. <laughs> and I can remember standing on on the, uh, in the balcony and looking at the Teen Week that was there at the time and saying to myself, wow, this place was worth it.